Hello, Supercars in Seconds here. Well, we have a McLaren Senna visiting at the moment, so I'm gonna give you a walk around and show you all the fun details on this car and how it's basically one big piece of carbon fiber and not much else. It really is incredible. The active aerodynamics in particular and the design of the exterior of the car, I'll show you that this car is really just the passenger carbon fiber structure and not much else. The rest of it, even though it looks very beautiful, is just to control airflow around the car. Let me show you these cool details. So the center key is similar to other McLaren. You'll notice at the bottom there, we have an image of the McLaren center. And what that little bottom button do is just turns the head, turns the lights on for us. We have the unlock and the lock in the normal way. So I'm gonna hit the unlock button. That will wake the car up. And I'm gonna reach, normally you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna reach underneath into a hole there which is how I close the door down. So I'll pull that down and you'll see the little strut there that we've had coordinated to the rest of the car to match the FINA, F-I-N-A, the FINA racing livery that this particular car has. A famous Senna feature, of course, is these amazing doors with that very large glass section in the bottom. Those are not for looking and, and uh, giving you, uh, you know, visibility for a corner. Not really, it's, you're going too fast for that. What this really does is increase the sensation of being in a very much an open cockpit car. So now inside she starts to uh, wake up. All the screens are very beautiful, like a plan view of the car there, showing you center on the main display here, very cool up there. Now to start the vehicle, it's not down in the center console like it is in most McLarens, it's actually up in the roof. So up here we've got our engine start stop. Here's our air conditioning, which changes it then on, you change it then on the screen down there. Air conditioning. You've got our, our race mode and our door locks. Further forward, we have our door release for both sides. That kind of confuses people when they get in the car for the first time, because there's no door handle on the door. It's up in the roof in the center. Then you have our window switches as well. Okay, so let's start center up. So again, I'm gonna reach up into the roof there and push our little start button. Here we go. Oof, and she comes to life. The displays all start to wake up and the whole seat is vibrating like crazy. Absolutely amazing. So now she's running all the displays and now on showing us everything we need to know. Really very, very impressive. That's all controlled by the home screen here. And again, I've mentioned before, that's not your home or the, that's the car's home. That's the McLaren Technical Center where the car was made. The bottom half is the lake. The top half is the building of that famous circular building in England where the cars are produced. One of the more amazing views of the McLaren Senna would be this rear end. Of course, you've got your laser cut titanium sections here. Just control airflow and pull all of that heat out of this amazing powertrain. Looking down inside here, though, you can see that there is no car. What I mean by that, going back to what I said a minute ago, that's the back of the radiator back down in there. Let me see that. That is underneath this section, but then it's hollow in here as well, so it's hollow both sides. I can put my arm underneath there, almost up to my elbow, so it's bizarre how open inside the car is. Moving further underneath the car, you might be able to see on the far side over there, this is a wooden section. That's a piece of wood that's on both sides underneath the car, and there's several at the front as well. What that piece of wood is doing is protecting the car. So if you run over a, on a track, you run over the curbs, it hits the pieces of wood first, not damaging your big carbon fiber diffuser. I'm not sure that's not the cheapest diffuser in the world, but it is a, a very beautiful piece. So again, this is one of McLaren's historic racing liveries. This is the FINA, F-I-N-A, FINA livery. They raced in the FINA livery back in the 90s, and I'll show the two different cars that they used there. So those two cars are just incredible. I had a, the f good fortune of sitting in the driver's seat of uh, one of the GTR cars, and it is an incredible machine. It doesn't feel like a car. I'll show a couple of the photos of that now. So 
So now up front is where the real sort of aero trickery starts. You can see the air getting, obviously getting sucked into this enormous volume. I'll put my hand in there to give you a section of scale there. It's absolutely enormous, <laughs> this big diffuser. Front splitter, of course, to catch air and squash the car into the ground. It then uses aero blades on the side here, but these two great big ones in here are active. Those actually, and again, I'll put my hand on them to give you an idea of how big they are. They're huge. Those will open and close in conjunction with the great big rear wing. So as that wing starts moving, these will start moving to equalize pressure throughout the car. So I'll slide around now, moving around this big diffuser in the front end here. Look at this, it's all hollow through there. Then it's hollow through the... <laughs> I'm going to come further back down past these wheels we'll talk about in a moment. But here's this section here and I can see back through there is all hollow. I'll turn around. We've got the door here, of course. We talked about a radiator, but further down, you'll notice daylight through this hole in here. That's all hollow too. Up in the center of the hood is where you actually charge the vehicle. I have released it. I'll pop this open for you and it weighs absolutely nothing, just literally like a piece of paper um, or carbon fiber work, of course. So we have power steering fluid, washer fluid for the windshield, uh, brake fluid here, and this is where you charge the vehicle when she's stationary. But you'll notice no seams. <laughs> it's all just one big piece of carbon fiber shrouding this enormous radiator um, up front here. The statistics on Senna are never ending is 789 horsepower um, is what they're admitting to. As you know, in most McLarens, there's usually a little bit more than that. But just pushing 2,640 pounds as a dry weight. So giving that a maximum horsepower per ton of 658 horsepower per ton. Absolutely incredible. The original Bugatti Veyron was 550 as a perspective. As you'd imagine, with such a lightweight, um, the body panels themselves are all carbon fiber. One of my favorite statistics is this is the front fender. So starting right here and going up there to that, just that little seam and back down to here. That is the front fence seams right there. Not this piece, it's this piece here. This long section weighs 600 grams before it's painted. The paint that's on it weighs more than the panel does. This is a carbon fiber panel and you know how hard carbon fiber is, but I can actually flex the panel look. Unbelievable. Senna has become very famous for its braking system. Your 390 millimeter roti is over 15 inches there. 380 millimeters actually on the rear wheel. The big innovation is the caliper. Um, again, I'll put my fingers on it as a perspective for you. <laughs> it's absolutely enormous. All cut away like a skeleton shape to save a ton of weight rather than being a big monoblock type uh, caliper. The fun thing about the caliper is it's not on the disc straight. So it's not on straight. It is on a slight angle. With the huge hydraulic pressure that's going through the caliper, it makes the caliper flex slightly as you hit the brakes. They have mounted the caliper on a very slight angle. So under full braking, when it flexes, it's then the pad is completely flat on the rotor. An amazing innovation. The rotor itself is very unique. Um, obviously a, a, a two piece uh, construction, but the top of the rotor here, difficult to catch perspective, but I would say it's uh, close to two inches possibly in its thickness. Now. Normally a rotor, that 720S there, that rotor is two plates with little bridges connecting the two together in the circle. That is one piece of carbon fiber, that huge thickness. So imagine all those little discs is probably a hundred layers of carbon fiber there, maybe more. They'll put 10 together and bake it. 10 more, bake it. 10 more, bake it. 10 more, bake it, and so on. That process takes a total of seven months to produce each rotor. A final note on the wheels, you have these uh, actually military grade aluminum on the wheel and the center caps is a single bolt uh, for each wheel, of course, in the center. These two are red. On the other side of the car, 
they are blue. Various cars through history have had that, the Carrera GT, things like that. It's basically from racing, so you'd know not to be able, not to put the wrong side wheel on the wrong side of the car because the tires are so directional. Meaning, if, if I look down through the back here, you can see all the stones it's picked up, but that big, great big wide section of flat wouldn't work on the other side because the rest of the tires angled sections are all facing one direction. So it only has one rotational direction. So when you approach the car, you reach into this little section under here, there's a rubber ridge there, that's the button. If I push on that, up the door comes. Again, a full carbon fiber structure. Look at that. Every single part of it is carbon fiber. Really incredible, I love it. No wheel arch, of course, that controls airflow around the car and sends it through this little duct on the side. Again, what they're trying to do is to control airflow as much as possible to be able to cool the engine very effectively, but also squash the car into the ground. Now, the actual statistic for downforce is unbelievable. At 155 miles an hour, they measure the downforce. She creates 1,760 pounds of downforce, which is simply incredible. The seats are uh, very much a Senna staple with these famous shoulder sections and actually holds you very comfortably. I had a customer that switched from one car to, to a car that had the Senna seats and he actually prefers the Senna seat over the comfortable seat, so very interesting. Um, I guess it's all to do with body type. Now, I'm gonna put my finger on this section just to give you an idea. It's actually thinner than my finger, so I think we see the harnesses back there look to match the livery and so on. The seat is incredible. It was actually designed by a young engineer at the McLaren factory, and he came up with the idea of using a balloon to create the seat. So there's two sheets of carbon fiber, a balloon between them, and then they squashed it together. Then as they bake the seat, the balloon dissolves inside, leaving us this unbelievable shape. The main advantage of the shape, of course, is weight. It doesn't weigh anything. We just have these pads. What have we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six big pads. But if you look here, it's actually thicker than you think right there. And so it's actually quite padded. If you look here, how much I can push it in. It's quite a comfortable seat. An innovation in this car, we have our transmission, launch control, city start, stop and hazards attached to this seat. So as the seat moves, those slide with it. So rather a, a cool thing there. Moving behind is our trunk. <laughs> Not much of a trunk, I understand, um, into the engine bay as well, of course. But that's a storage for actually just two helmets that will fit in there. You have part of the Bowers and Wilkins audio system as well, um, which is everywhere in the car. Even though this is just a carbon fiber shell, basically, there are speakers everywhere in the doors and dash and so on. There are right throughout the car. Moving back outside, we have the famous McLaren roof snorkel, of course, made famous by the original McLaren F1 years ago. And it's just induction. It feeds the turbochargers is what it does, basically. Um, it doesn't do any cooling. It just feeds the engine with air. Really a nice option. You don't hear it in this car as much as you hear it in the P1, of course, because the P1's snorkel started right up at the front of the roof. So it was right above your head as the air was rushing by you. Moving further back on the body, we have our fuel. The sign will push this in and release it. That will open this up where you, so you can see where your fuel goes. But even this particular door is carbon fiber. So of course, with this crazy carbon fiber structure, servicing is an issue. So they've given us little hatches that we can open here. So this one opens, of course, the opposite way to the fuel one. This is where we add our coolant. Again, the carbon fiber structure, door weighs nothing. You can just flop it back and forth. Then for oil, it actually goes back in here. I don't know if you can see a little door right there. In your toolkit comes a carbon fiber screwdriver that opens this up. That door pops up and they can add fresh oil through the back there. Moving on to the uh, elephant in the room, <laughs> the wing. It is uh, a crazy wing. Again, it's difficult to get perspective, but I'll put my hand on this end plate to give you some kind of idea. I'll put my hand on the main wing itself. I mean, it has to be Gosh, 20 inches this way, and of course the full width of the car. I'll back right off, and it's literally just on the edge of the body, either side. Again, it is a road car, so it cannot you know, go out, outside the width of the car. 
it's supported by these great big pylons. I don't know if you can catch it through the light there. There you are, but you can see that this is carbon fiber. This structure goes right down through the back of the car and is bolted right to the frame. It has to be bolted into the frame for the massive downforce that this thing creates. Um, it was 1,760 pounds of downforce and a lot of it is created by this great big wing as it articulates and moves around. To support it, they have 100 thicknesses of carbon fiber here. Then you have little, um, a little metal section on the top and titanium and so on, just for the strength of that. This is a unique thing in the industry. Most of the manufacturers struggle to get more than three or four layers, sometimes six layers thick. That is a new technology to create 100 thicknesses of carbon fiber. Hopefully that, so hopefully that demonstrates my point. Um, that's hollow. There's nothing underneath it. If I show you, look, it goes for miles. <laughs> There's nothing underneath that. So that's hollow. This is hollow here. That's hollow underneath. This is all hollow. So again, it's just the passenger cell, the, the, the cage, the mono cage that, that's here. And the rest of it is just controlling airflow and feeding that great big wing. Really an incredible car. And it's not only its look, but in its performance. I actually think the P1 is more beautiful, but this has a beauty of its own when you stood next to the car. It is very, very interesting. You can literally stare at it for ages and finding new little bits of detail that you might not have noticed before. It really is uh, an incredible machine.